What's up, everybody? I'm here with uh, living in Southwest Florida, Jerry Neesman of the Neesman team at Keller Williams Realty. And today I am here to talk to you about the top five best neighborhoods to live in in all of Cape Coral, Florida. Yes, this might be a little bit controversial among the locals, and that is okay. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinion. So if you're a local and watching this, please feel free to share your take and tell me whether you agree or disagree in the comments. So we're gonna start off with number five. Number five is Gator Circle. I'm giving Gator Circle the number five spot even though it does not make most people's lists of top spots in Cape Coral. Not super, not traditionally considered one of the uh, best places, but personally, I think it's got a ton of positives going for it. Number one, it is the one of the most affordable areas in Cape Coral to buy a home right now. And typically, it's always one of the most affordable places in Cape Coral to buy a home. And when you're talking about affordability or the lack thereof when it comes to home ownership these days, being one of the most affordable areas in the city, I think is key. So median home price of about 400,000. And most of the homes in the area are newer. Most of them are built 2004 or later with a ton of new construction happening there right now, uh, which means lower insurance rates, better insulation, so lower utility bills, and the entire area is not in a flood zone. Uh, so you don't have the added cost of needing flood insurance as well. Also super close to 41. So it's one of the easiest parts of Cape Coral to get out of if you are working. Super easy access to 41 and therefore easy access to 75 as well. Uh, it is Northeast Cape Coral. So it is the closest to uh, Fort Myers, North Fort Myers. If you need to go East or if you need to get on uh, 41, 75 to go North or South. And also the 41 bridges, there's no tolls. So you don't have to pay to get back home every night like you do with the other bridges. So that's what it is that, that makes Gator Circle number five for me. Now, number four, the Burnt Store Seven Islands area. I love this area for a number of reasons. One, if you're looking for boating accessibility, it's really tough to beat this location. There is no lock no river to deal with so there's no waiting in line to go get through the lock during the busy season or the slow trip through the no wake zones in the river lovingly known as the miserable mile none of those issues here vast majority of the homes are again newer so again in terms of cost of ownership this would be number two reason why uh, cost of ownership is uh, much less in terms of Newer homes typically don't need a whole lot of maintenance. That comes up later on 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So if you're buying something very new, which a lot of the homes in this area are, uh, you don't have to worry about those maintenance issues. Insurance costs are significantly lower on the newer homes because they're built to the most uh, up-to-date, most recent building codes and guidelines. And uh, utility costs again are lower because newer codes and everything they're better insulated and lower utility costs as well. And then depending on exactly where within this neighborhood, most of the area where I'm talking about uh, already has city water and sewer hooked up to it. So while yes, there are some assessments on a lot of them that still need to be paid off, they are at least partially paid and it's already in. So you don't have to worry about what is that cost going to look like down the road when it does come through and uh, you also know exactly what you're getting, what you're getting into, and you have city water and sewer, you don't have to worry about, is my well deep enough? Is it gonna run dry if the water gets, uh, if, you know, if the water level gets too low, you don't have to worry about septic issues or anything like that. It's all already in and done. The third reason why I really like this area is in my mind, it has the most growth potential it is where it is currently the area where where there's a significant majority of commercial growth proposed between the seven islands development that is proposed and that they're working on uh, getting finalized and everything as well as uh, some other major commercial developments i mean i've i've seen talks of 
all kinds of stuff, but big commercial areas happening right in that general area of uh, Pine Island and like Chiquita are not, yeah, Pine Island, Chiquita, Pine Island, Burnt Store, like in that whole general area right there, there is so much conversation about all the different development that they're talking about doing and especially commercial space, not just residential. There's gonna be a lot of activities coming in there in the next five to 10 years probably. So in terms of growth potential, I feel like that area is huge. There's so much expansion happening there and especially with the Pine Island extension getting close to finishing up as well and uh, widening that. And then of course, another reason it is the closest part of Cape Coral to one of my favorite barrier islands, which is Pine Island. Really love Pine Island. It's a, a down to earth little, basically couple of fishing villages, but just awesome little area. It did take a major beating during Hurricane Ian, but they are well on their way back to rebuilding. And uh, there's already multiple shops and restaurants and, and things like that reopened again. And there's a ton more on their way. People are really working hard to put the island back together and rebuild it. It will never be what it was before. Uh, just can't bring back exactly a lot of that historic stuff. But, you know, things that uh, out of every natural disaster, there are uh, new upgrades and, and changes that, uh, you know, it is going to be more modern and, uh, and updated. So it'll be interesting to see how it comes back, but there's a ton of stuff coming back. And I think the, uh, the people of Pine Island are gonna do a really good job of making sure that it, you know, that it comes back in a way that is still gives us that warm welcoming vibe that, uh, that it always has. So for this particular area, the median price point in the neighborhood is about 650. If you are looking for something that is golf access in that area, 650 is not gonna get you much, but there are a few homes that are under that price point that are golf access in the neighborhood that are available for sale right now. However, the majority of the golf access stuff is going to be closer to a million or over a million dollars um, for the newer, nicer stuff uh, like I was referring to earlier. But if you're a boater and don't necessarily care about having your boat on a canal in, the, in your backyard, you can always keep it there at your home, in your backyard, and trailer it, and you're right there by the Matt Lachey boat ramp, super quick and easy to uh, put your boat in the water there, excuse me, and, uh, and quick to get out to open water. My number three best neighborhood in Cape Coral is Sandoval. Uh, now this one strays a little bit from the norm of Cape Coral as uh, you may or may not be familiar. Cape Coral does not uh, have a whole lot of uh, gated communities, don't have a whole lot of HOAs. So you don't have like, uh, if you're familiar with Fort Myers or Naples or anything like that, there's a lot of communities, gated communities with HOAs and that sort of thing. There aren't very many in Cape Coral. Sandoval is one of them. So. As I said, strays a little bit from the norm. It is deed restricted, gated community. And so it makes the list because it's been around for a while now. It was started back in the early to mid 2000s, finished up, uh, really started I think around 2003, 2004, if I remember correctly, and finished up around 2007, 2008. And so it's been around for a while. They've done a really good job of maintaining reasonable fees uh, they're not the cheapest fees in Southwest Florida by any means, but they're very reasonable for the amenities that they come with and for the way that that community is maintained. The uh, I give the board a ton of credit there. They've done a great job of, of maintaining that community and keeping the fees very low for what they give you. So incredible resort style amenities, super well-maintained community and very reasonable fees. So if that's something, if you're looking, you want to be in Cape Coral, but uh, but you prefer the, the gated community and all of that feel and the amenities and everything that come along with it, this is probably a good spot to check out. It is fantastic location right on, on Veterans Parkway in uh, Southwest Cape. And 
ton of commercial development right around it. There are restaurants and a couple of bars and a Publix shopping and everything right outside the community. Literally like you can, it's close enough to walk to, which is almost unheard of in, anywhere in Southwest Florida, being able to have anything like that, any amenities like that outside of a community that are walkable. So it's all right there. You can walk, you can ride your bike, you can even take your golf cart to it. And so just really great setup. Don't need to drive everywhere. And again, being newer homes, lower insurance costs, lower utility bills. Also, again, a more affordable community in Cape Coral. The median price point is 450. That does include, they have condos and single family homes there. And so there are condos, which are gonna skew that on the, the lower end. And then the single family homes are obviously gonna be on the higher end, but there's plenty of single family homes uh, in that under 450 or around 450 price point. All right, we're about halfway through the best neighborhoods in Cape Coral. So make sure you keep watching to find out which neighborhood's number one. And again, if you have any questions or comments, or you think I'm totally wrong and full of crap, tell me about it in the comments. Love to hear it, love to see what, uh, what your opinions are. All right, so number two. My number two choice in all of Cape Coral is Cape Harbor. Cape Harbor is one of the most prestigious communities in all of Cape Coral boating community designed around the marina. Um, it almost kind of wraps around the marina. Shopping, multiple restaurants, just excellent food. Every time we've been over there, they have great stuff. Never had bad service, never had bad food at any of the restaurants there in Cape Harbor. If you're a boater, wet and dry boat storage. They also have boat rentals available on site and a good mix of different types of homes kind of hitting different price points as well. So they've got condos and single family homes. Many of the single family homes come on sailboat access canals. So uh, no bridges to deal with. And uh, you've got your own seawall or dock right in your backyard. And now it is a gated community. It does have a clubhouse, so it's got those amenities. Clubhouse, community pool, tennis courts, median home price in Cape Harbor is 970,000. Uh, which also happens to be the exact price of the lowest priced single family home currently for sale in the neighborhood. So as that tells you, basically all of the single family homes are going to be over a million and the condos will all be under that 970 price point. Condos are running from about 500,000 up to 850 and the single family homes run from 970 up to almost 5 million. So got a big spread, big range, lots of uh, different options for, uh, you know, for anybody that's interested in that. So that is Cape Harbor. All right, before I get to number one, I've got to throw an honorable mention in here in Cape Coral Yacht Club. I uh, have to talk about Cape Coral Yacht Club because it is such an iconic neighborhood in Cape Coral. It is really pretty much where it all started for Cape Coral. Majority of the homes are the classic smaller 50s to 60s style ranch homes, very low pitched roofs. Although that has been changing since the uh, early to mid 2010s, so 2013 to 2015, as building really started picking back up, a lot of people wanted to be in that area, but they didn't want the older style homes. So they started coming in, buying the older ones that needed a lot of renovation and work and uh, tearing them down and building, building new, uh, new, bigger, more modern homes on them. So now it's kind of created this eclectic mix of both the, uh, the old classic style homes and the newer homes. And I, I kind of like it. I think it's kind of cool the way it's uh, mixed together. So some of the big draws to this neighborhood and why it is worth it for people to go in and buy existing homes, tear them down, and build new ones is uh, the land value is huge. Uh, there's a ton of Gulf of Access canals in the area in this neighborhood. So lots and lots of homes on the water. And it is the quickest point to get out from on the riverside. You're as far south as you can get in the Yacht Club on the river. So just the, the quickest point out, the least amount of uh, cruising through that miserable mile as possible. And uh, it's also the quickest and easiest way to get over to Fort Myers. 
And it's also closest to the most well-developed uh, commercial shopping area and uh, activity area in uh, Cape Coral. So you're right down the road from Southeast 47 Terrace, which is where the majority of the nightlife is, the bars, the restaurants, uh, tons of shopping, lots of cool stuff to do there. So that is the big plus. It's super quick to everything, easy access. And so also in the Yacht Club, you have, well, the, the Yacht Club itself is now in the process of undergoing renovation. Uh, however, the uh, restaurant and the beach, yes, there is a beach in Cape Coral and there's actually two beaches in Cape Coral right now, but the biggest one, the one that most people know of and that most people go to and use is the one in the Yacht Club. Uh, so it's where the beach is and you've also got an awesome restaurant there. Uh, the boathouse at the Yacht Club is fantastic. Tons of outdoor seating. It's basically a giant tiki hut restaurant. So all the, the great food and drinks and everything you can have right there, waterfront, tons of space. So great location. Current median price in this neighborhood is about a million and a quarter. And so that does take into account all of the, uh, you know, the lower priced older homes as well as the, uh, the updated renovated homes. All right, number one, we're here. Thanks for sticking with us and watching. It's the number one best neighborhood in all of Cape Coral, in my personal opinion, is Tarpon Point Marina. The reason I call Tarpon Point the best neighborhood in all of Cape Coral is it's got very similar amenities to Cape Harbor. The one big plus that it has over Cape Harbor is no lock. Cape Harbor is just behind the lock in terms of boating. Getting out to the open water, you do have to go through the lock with Cape Harbor. With Tarpon Point Marina, no lock to deal with. It is a smaller neighborhood in terms of the homes that are actually a part of Tarpon Point Marina though. Although the neighborhood around it all benefits from these same amenities as well, you're just not inside the gated community of Tarpon Point. So all the amenities, fantastic marina set up just like Cape Harbor in that you have wet and dry boat storage, multiple restaurants and bars for uh, dining and drink options, all very good, great shopping. Uh, they do have boat rentals and the ability to, uh, to charter boats out of there. So if you want to do a fishing charter or shelling cruise or anything like that, private charter, you can do it right there at Tarpon Point. And uh, one thing that they have that Cape Harbor does not is they have a luxury hotel on site. So you do have the West in there and super nice hotel, tons of amenities. The, uh, and the benefit of having the hotel there is you get a full service spa and fitness center on site as part of your, uh, part of your amenities in your neighborhood. So spa, fitness center, two heated pools. One of them is a lap pool. The other one is a, a huge resort style, beautiful pool. And uh, then you've got tennis and bocce courts as well. And both uh, three different types of homes, I should say. You've got the high rise condo buildings, the uh, larger coach home style condos, which for those that don't know, those are typically uh, four to six units per building. And I believe in Tarpon Point, they are all four units per building, if I remember correctly. Um, but bigger condos with garages, attached garages, uh, are those coach home style buildings. And then you have the single family estate homes. Uh, medium price currently in Tarpon Point is a million five seventy five, And that is the median price point for condos. There are no single family homes currently for sale in Tarpon Point. There's only 47 home sites total in there for single family homes inside, like I said, inside the gates. There's only 47 home sites. So it's few and far between when those come up. And you can imagine if the condos are a million and a half and above, the uh, single family homes are gonna be significantly higher than that. So that's it. 
Tarpon Point is the number one best neighborhood in all of Cape Coral, in my opinion. Again, thanks for watching. Please give me your thoughts, your opinions, questions, comments, concerns. Tell me you hate my picks. All good. I'll take it. We'll talk about it. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe if, this, uh, if you like this video. And uh, ring the bell for notifications so that you get them when we post our future videos.